This has got to be one of the most controversial and challenging issues in medicine. And there is a good reason for that because it's different than just about everything else in healthcare. I'm Dr. Steven Wangen, the founder and medical director of the IBS Treatment Center. I have probably treated well over a thousand cases of candida overgrowth in the digestive system and man, did it take me a long time to figure out why it's so difficult to treat. But over the past 25 years, I learned a lot about that and I'd like to share that with you here. Successfully treating a candida overgrowth takes three things. One, you must change your diet. Two, you must have the right treatment. And three, you must have a really good understanding of this process and really pack your patience when you do this. Treating a bad candida overgrowth in the gut is not like you normally think of treating a bacterial infection. You can't just take an antibiotic, live your life like normal and expect the problem to just go away. You have to participate in the treatment, you have to change your diet, and you have to understand a few really critical things about candida in order to conquer them which I'll explain. First, let's talk about the diet. Candida, like most yeast, thrive on sweets and sugars. And if you don't stop feeding them, nothing else that you do will make much difference. You have to stop feeding them the things that make them strong. And that means not eating anything sweet. And that includes anything naturally sweet. No desserts, no lattes, no sodas, no candy, no chocolate, nothing sweet and that includes smoothies and dried fruit and stuff like that right if it tastes sweet then it's a problem and it doesn't matter how natural it is or how organic it is candida will still love it and they love alcohol too so you'll have to cut out all alcohol as well now some anti-candida diets get even much stricter than that and include the avoidance of all starches and all carbs. But let's just start here with the fundamentals. It's usually enough, by the way, and there is no point in making the diet harder unless we really have to. Now, if you've already done this, you've cut out all those kinds of things, and you still don't really feel much better, that's because you have to do a lot more than just change your diet. Number two, the treatment. So you may not feel much better by just changing your diet unless you also take a really good antifungal treatment. And there are many, many good options out there, which is the good news. The key is finding something that's actually working. And there is no one thing that's always going to work, no matter what you've heard or what you've read on the internet, what somebody's sold you. Candida and yeast, like bacteria, can develop resistance to things, right? So just like bacteria can have resistance to antibiotics. So we have to find something that is going to work. And ironically, natural antifungals are often really excellent options. So these include things like garlic or oregano oil, and there are all kinds of herbal and botanical medicines that have wonderful antifungal, anti-candida properties. They must be, of course, of very high quality to work well, right? They have to be highly concentrated, and you must know how to dose them, and you must take them long enough, but they can be just as good as any prescriptive antifungal. And I've used them successfully in literally thousands of patients uh, over the years. So, that's the natural side, which is great, and you have access to those things on your own. Another great option is nystatin. Nystatin is a prescriptive antifungal, and it is very safe and does not have the potential side effects that many other prescriptive antifungal medications have because, it, because get this, because it is not absorbed. So it doesn't get past the digestive tract, but you don't need it anywhere else, right? You're using it to address a problem in the digestive tract. But because it's not absorbed, it does not affect your liver and it does not affect your kidneys, right? It doesn't have any other toxicity to it. But again, you have to dose it properly 
and you have to take it long enough to get the job done. And this generally means weeks or even months, actually usually months. It's not some kind of magic pill just because it's prescriptive. Nothing is magic once you've got a major candida overgrowth in your digestive microbiome. It takes time to change that microbiome, right? To eradicate the candida and to rebuild that ecosystem. You can't just expect to do it overnight. Now, regardless of what you use, there will likely be some major challenges during the treatment process. And this leads us to part three of the treatment process. Now, what did I say part three was? Part three is knowledge and packing your patients. Now, this is things, this is where things get really interesting. At least what I think get really interesting is when you treat candida, you will likely feel worse before you feel better. Now you know what I was talking about, what I was getting at, but you're like, what? Yeah, you heard that right. It may sound really stupid, but if you don't understand that and you don't believe it and you stop the treatment because you feel worse, then it's likely that you will never actually experience any long-term relief. And we call this the yeast die-off effect or the candida die-off effect. And it's also known as the Herxheimer reaction. And here's what happens. In at least 50% of, and I'm talking about all the patients that I've ever treated, like over a thousand times, right, that I've treated a candida overgrowth, the patients got worse at least half of the time, and they get worse for a, a while. And it wasn't a reaction to the thing we used to treat it, because when they're switched to something else that's just as effective, they get the same reaction. Same thing happens. That's how I learned that it wasn't just the thing I was using. Candida do not go down easy. They literally, they fight like hell and they make your life miserable in the process. So it's a battle when you're treating candida and you want to win the whole war, right? But you have to win that first battle. And so you have to stick with the treatment and you'll probably feel like your digestive, digestive problems are worse. That's what I mean when, when things are gonna feel worse. Your digestive symptoms are probably gonna feel worse you may get all tired and headachy, and it can almost feel like having the flu. A lot of people will describe it that way. It's all very temporary though, but it can last from days to even weeks or even longer, and that depends on how bad things are, like how bad this candida overgrowth is, and it depends on how aggressive you are with the treatment plan. So if you know that this is gonna happen or likely to happen, and if you know what's going on when it does happen, you're more likely to stick with the treatment. And you'll typically start to feel better within the range of something like, it could be as short as three days or maybe three weeks, but that's kind of average. Those are kind of typical. But treating a candida overgrowth, it's a very tricky process, right? And it can help to have an expert guide you through it as you go through it. And if that's what you need, then give us a call because that's what we do. That's one of the things we help patients with. Now, those are the fundamentals of treating a candida overgrowth. It's not always easy, but it is always extremely rewarding and it can truly change your life. Do you think that you might have a candida overgrowth? If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more information about candida and other aspects of digestive health. Thanks for watching.